as they run to the 200. Temple of Boom moved out after Zaratone. Nobby Snip getting through in the middle and then came title on the inside. But it's Temple of Boom. Temple of Boom won it. The three's on favourite, said Tada, raced away, and it's all over in the guineas. He's about three lengths on Tatra Sacred Falls. Solomon's running on, but what an electrifying turn of foot he had at the top of the straight, and he'll cruise down and win the Rose Hill guineas. It's a done deal by five lengths Sacred Falls. But it's Earthquake out in the middle. She's taken the lead clearly. Moss Fun is next and down the outside. Memorial's running on. Moss Fun's kicking back on the inside. Earthquake's dying in a run and Moss Fun! Moss Fun right along the rail has won it from Earthquake. Real Impact is still the leader from Criterion. Shooting the wind can't get there. Criterion the inside of Real Impact. Real Impact and Criterion. Criterion driving here at Real Impact. Oh, it's a close one. Real Impact refused to sit down. But the favourite contributor races to the front. Tosin Stardom goes into second. Then Lucia Valentina, but contributors drawing clear in the round bit. Pretty cosy at the finish and contributor wins it by a length and a half. Five Group 1s out of Rose Hill today. Our man James McDonald has ridden the winner of all of them in the past. Not sure if you could hear that highlight reel as we say good morning to you, James. Did you know you'd ridden all five Group 1 winners today in the past? Uh, how are you, Mickey? Um, yeah, no, it's, a, it's been a great day to me. I, um, I think um, the Galaxy was my first Group 1 in Sydney as well. So um, this day's got a special place in my heart and... Um, when, it, when Temple Boom did win the Galaxy, it was actually at Ramwick. So, um, obviously, there must have been something happening at Rose Hill that year. And um, But it's good to be out there with a few live chances today. Mate, the season's going incredibly well for you. You're leading the Sydney Jockeys Premiership. But you were also back in the Group 1 winning saddle quite early in the season. We're about to look at the Autumn Sun. Uh, I'm sure he's a horse you wouldn't mind being on today. But, look, is he so good, James, that he's almost unbeatable today, or does he become vulnerable because it's a stickyish type track at 2,000 metres? Is there any chinks in the armour of the horse you rode to win the Caulfield Guineas? Um, well, his performances today have been great, but in saying that, they've been by small margins. So if he makes an, a little error anywhere in the race, he's, he's, he's vulnerable. But I think he's taken on he's taken on three. Kiwi runners that are out of us, Derby, so they'll be as fit as they can be. And he's stepping up on a heavy track to 2,000 metres, which he looks suited to, but um, I, I don't think he, he probably deserves to be as short as he what he is, but he's, um, he's definitely a great horse, and he's a winner as well, and it, it makes all the difference. So um, even though he's not taking on the strongest crop, crop of three-year-olds, he's taking on fit, fit three-year-olds that are, um, come out of a 2,400-metre race, so he's going to have to be on his game. Mate, you're on Tenley in the Golden Slipper. It's one of those slippers that looks really even. It doesn't have a standout, really champion two-year-old. Yep, we might have won by the end of the day. You rode Cosmic Force to win last week on a very deep track, and but you'd committed to Tenley before that. If you could remake that choice this morning, would there be much between Cosmic Force and Tenley? Um, well, it's hard to ignore that performance of Cosmic Force. He was extremely good um, when he won by eight or uh, seven or eight lengths. And it's probably been the performance of the year for two-year-olds. But in saying that, I'm very happy with the choice I made with Henley. She's, uh, she's, she's a winner. She's um, done nothing wrong to date and she'll run a strong six out, which she'll have to do today. And uh, she's had that ideal preparation where she raced for Fort Chris Fitch, which is a class, and then she's had two lead out runs for this to be third up for a uh, basically a PB. So um, if she doesn't get through the track conditions, she'll be the only bloody great horse that I know that does. <laughs> well, let's hope she does for you, mate, because uh, two slippers would be an awesome accomplishment at your age. You've ridden plenty of others here. You've ridden Microphone, obviously Cosmic Force last week, um, Bivouac, and look, you've ridden uh, Kamichi. Is there much between these horses, James? Because when you look at the field, it feels really even. Like most of the horses have shown at least enough to suggest they could win the race. Yeah, I've basically ridden at least a quarter of the field, and um, um, you probably left one out there that's really a nice horse as well. And that's Loving Gabby, but she's she's um, 
she's a very inexperienced mate for a half hour for her, but she uses a lot of quality. Um, Marcus Brody is a business like kind of horse, just jumps, puts himself in the gun spot and does does the rest, you know. Um, his record speaks for itself. Uh, and then Kamichi rests on the speed. So probably the only thing against Henley is she's probably a little bit better than him and will turn out to be better than him, but in saying that, she's going to have to make a bit of luck from back in the field. And um, if there's tempo on, um, she'll run a strong six out. But um, it's a funny race. We don't know where we'll be in the race, like, as in off the rail, on the rail. Um, we'll be scouting more. Like, I don't, I'm not too sure at this stage. The race, the track played very good last weekend for a heavy track, and um, I expect the same this weekend. James, I know speed mapping and where you think horses are going to be and where your rivals are going to be are crucial at the top level in Australia. Is it impossible to map a slipper for two reasons, because of the track you mentioned, but because most people want to press forward and get involved early. Like, for some a horse like Tenley, do you have to be really flexible in your thoughts? Yeah, well, she's pretty one-dimensional. She's got back at every start, and so she's relying on a bit of tempo. Um, as, a tip, as a typical slipper, um, they tend to go, if it looks moderate pace on paper, they'll, be, they'll go quicker, because there's always one that will from the inside will hold a length closer in position um, and that forces the pace to go on two lengths quicker. And if, that, if the runners from out wide circle and navigating, they're going to want to be cross. You've got a 400 metre run to the first fence. So um, there's not a lot of time for these young two-year-olds and everyone wants to get close to the fence. So um, as, a, as, a, as a rule with the slipper, it's always genuine tempo and, um, and that's with the runners being likely to be midfield will always press for a spot further closer and that's just the way it is. They're always for big money and uh, and everyone wants to give them the best possible chance. So um, I'm hoping it's really good genuine tempo in this race and um, Tenley comes out on top. Mate, the Ranvit is a wait for age race without the autumn sun and without winks, which makes it a winnable race for some of these horses who probably couldn't beat those type of horses. You're on He's Eminent, or Eminent as he was known up in England and France, um, for your good friend Sir Peter Vella. I know you've had a sit on the horse for Sir Mark Todd. Can he win today? Because obviously he has wet track form, having raced in the Northern Hemisphere. Or are you thinking he's going to need a run? Um, it's hard to know. I haven't had a lot to do with the horse, to be fair. And Mark's a bit unknown as well. So we're both going in a bit fine order, but... In saying that, I've, I've sat on a lot of Europeans from tri that travel from Europe down, and um, I can safely say this is by the far and away the best quality horse I've sat on um, down here. Um, he's, he uses a lot of quality. It's obviously, he's got great form as a three-year-old, and it's tapered off the last few starts. But if you recatch that three-year-old form, he's definitely going to be... Whatever beats him will win the race, basically. And... Um, Look, he's, I feel he's very fit, but you can't underestimate match fitness, and um, that's probably what he's going to lack, but he's definitely got class on his side, and he's been working extremely well. How do you think Dan's Dan's Dance will go against the Australian Wait for Age horses minus Winks? Because she's been awfully good here. Is she good enough to win a race like this? Especially in the bog, I think she, she, this is her race. Um, that if she's going to be competitive, and it will be this race... Um, I can't see her figuring against Winks and those kind of horses, but um, they've found a nice race for her to kick off. She's got conditions to suit, so this will be her day to shine, really, if she is ever going to make a step up. She's been in Australia before as a younger three-year-old, and she failed that time. So, look, she's probably a bit unknown, but um, I think she's definitely good enough to compete, and um, whether she's good enough to win, I'm not sure. J-Mac, we're looking at your book of rides. It's Resin, Military Zone, Casted In for OTI, Crown Prosecutor for Stephen Marsh, of course. Um, Ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, he's eminent, Ten Lee and Nature Strip. It's a lovely book. What's your best chance of riding a winner on the day? Not the one you want to win, but the one who's most likely to win. Um, look, probably most likely is Risen. She's drawn a little bit awkwardly, but she's a very good horse in love for most. Um, she looks pretty well suited in that race, and um, she's obviously taken on another very highly talented three-year-old in the event page, and so she's going to have to be on a game, but um, she, I think she's well suited today. Mate, you've been sitting in the steam room today trying to shed the last half a kilo before you go to the races. You've done this all before. You've ridden a winner at Ascot. 
James, when you wake up on Golden Slipper morning, is it a slightly different feel to a normal Saturday? Do you feel it even now after all these years of experience? Oh, absolutely. There's obviously a bit of a buzz going around. And, um, you tend to wake up a little bit earlier than what I normally would. I was up at 6 this morning with a spring in my step, and um, it's pretty exciting. I've got there's, there's three really, really nice horses that I'm looking forward to swinging my leg over today. And, um, hopefully they'll do it for us. Mate, good luck. We hope you ride a bunch of winners, including the Slipper and maybe even Crown Prosecutor for New Zealand and the Rose Guineas.